Hello family, Pastor Olaolu here from Christian Pentecostal Church and we're continuing our Legion series and this is Allegiance 5, the title being Somebody's Always Watching You. Um, the verse of scripture we're starting out with is found in Philippians chapter 2 verse 12, it says, Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but much more in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Um, when I think of a verse like that, and you know, when I think about salvation, you know, you're saved, yes, but um, your growth afterwards, or the strength of that salvation, or the your understanding changes. It increases. It strengthens. It gets uh, bulkier. Is a way to put it. And uh, it reminds me of in college, I um, I used to, you know, I never really worked out. You know, I sat in my room. All my roommates used to go to the gym. Then um, after a while, I, uh, I don't remember exactly why, but I decided to go to the gym with them. And after going to the gym, I found that my strength increased. I used to go to the gym almost every day. Strength increased. I mean, yes, in mass, I grew, but also like, your strength increased. And I was reminded of that this week when I, I had some tissue in my hand. Like it was a stack of tissues and I was just trying to rip it to share. And um, I found it a little difficult. And I remember, wow, I'm, I'm not saying like it was a tiny stash, but you know, it was a stack of tissues. And I remembered the days where I used to, this was easy, you know, and it's, you know, I find that, you know, I can, anyone, if your mind is set on the things of Christ, you can always find in everything in life, find how it relates to Christ. Seeing so he's in all, he is all and in all. And it reminded me of salvation in the sense that, wow, you know, if we don't work out our salvation, we will not be as strong as we need to be. But so the verse says, Wherefore, my brethren, as ye have always obeyed, not in my presence only, but also, or but much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. And I'm going to read a little bit um, from Luke. If you grab your Bible and uh, if you have an opportunity to and read with me. Luke chapter 6. And I'm going to be jumping around a little in this chapter. But I'm going to start with verse 6 through 11. Luke chapter 6, verse 6 through 11. It says, And it came to pass also on another Sabbath that he entered into the synagogue and taught. And there was a man whose right hand was withered, and the scribes and Pharisees watched him, whether he would heal on the Sabbath, that they might find an accusation against him. If you notice, they were watching him. He entered, and they were automatically watching Jesus Christ to see what he would do so that they could find an accusation against him. But he knew their thoughts and, and said to the man which had the withered hand, Rise up and stand forth in the midst. And he arose and stood forth. Then said Jesus unto them, I will ask you one thing. Is it lawful on the Sabbath days to do good or, do, or to do evil, to save life or to destroy it? And looking round about upon them all, he said unto the man, Stretch forth thy hand. And he did so, and his hand was restored whole as the other. And they were filled with madness and communed one with another what they might do to Jesus. What's interesting here is, you know, Jesus, he knew they were watching him. He knew full well that they were watching him to see what he would do. But righteousness prevailed. We see our master, our Lord, our Savior. He stands and he says, what is the right thing to do here despite the fact that you're all watching me and i know full well because as he knew their hearts he knew their thoughts i know full well what you will plan to do you will plan based on what i do here how to destroy me how to bring me down but righteousness must stand and he said is it lawful to do good on the sabbath days is it right is it good to do good 
to restore life or to destroy life. And we know what he did. He restored life. And they did exactly what they planned on doing, what he knew they'd do from the beginning, which was they were filled with madness. That's a very interesting word, madness. You know, they were filled with madness, rage, blind rage. And they communed with one another how to destroy him. Verse 22 of the same Luke 6 says, Blessed are ye when men shall hate you, and when they, and when they shall separate you from their company, and shall reproach you, and cast out your name as evil for the Son of Man's sake. 23 says, Rejoice ye in that day, and leap for joy, for behold, your reward is great in heaven. For in, the, in like manner did their father unto the prophets. 26, just bear with me for a second. 26 says, Woe unto you when all men shall speak well of you. For so did their fathers to the false prophets. 40, the disciple is not above his master, but everyone that is perfect shall be as or like his master. And lastly, 46, and why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? The fact of the matter is we have to start asking ourselves, when was the last time that somebody challenged us because for righteousness sake? The Bible says we're in the world, we're not of the world. We know in this, the climate we find in this world is divisive. It's evil. It's just people are lovers of themselves. They stand that they lift up almost everything but the name of Jesus Christ. Now, as the body of Christ... The word of God says that we should rejoice, that we are blessed when men hate us and when they separate us from their company and reproach us and cast our name out as, as evil because we stand for righteousness. Do we stand for righteousness? In the moment where we see wrong, in the moment where we see evil, do we stand for righteousness? Do we call evil what it is by its name, evil. Do we call a lie by its name, a lie? Do we call cheating by its name, cheating? Or do we excuse things away? Do we look the other way and pretend it doesn't, it's not happening? The truth of the matter is, people are always watching us. In the same way how they watch Jesus when he entered the synagogue is the same way they watch us when we declare the name of Christ. When we call ourselves aligned or allies of Christ, we have said that we belong to him. And he says that how can you or why do you call me Lord, Lord, and you do not what I say? The world watches knowing full well. You know, it's interesting that non-Christians will know what the word of God says. And they'll call you out for doing unrighteousness, although they don't obey it. As the body of Christ, we represent Christ to the fullest. He is our Lord and our master and our responsibility is to do exactly what he has told us to do. To stand for righteousness and let us be persecuted because of it. Because we are blessed by the Father. We are blessed by the Father when that persecution comes for righteousness sake. That's what he has said. And that must be true. The Apostle Paul says, as much be obedient, be mindful of these things in my absence, much more in my absence than in my presence. We know that the Almighty Father is ever watching. But sometimes we like to pretend that's not happening. Sometimes we like to pretend that or forget, conveniently forget that God is all knowing, he's all seeing. And when the time comes to stand for righteousness, we don't. When the time comes to do that which is right, we don't. When we see persecution, we can see injustice, we look the other way. But God is watching. But men are also watching. And do we 
Do we uplift the name of Christ in that situation or do we sully his name? He is our Lord and we must do what he says. A true ally, a true ally of Christ, a true servant of the living God remains true whether or not he or she believes that others are watching. A true ally remains true, remains faithful, whether or not he or she believes that others are watching. The Apostle Peter was reminded of this by the Apostle Paul in Galatians chapter 2. The Almighty, the All-Knowing, and the All-Seeing God is ever watching. And in addition to him, mankind watches us and judges us for our allegiance as well. May we, by his grace, ever remain faithful and true at all times. Lastly, I remember um, there's a song by Casting Crowns uh, called Slow Fade. Um, and the, uh, the chorus of the song basically goes, it's a slow fade when you give yourself away. It's a slow fade when black and white are turned to gray. Thoughts invade, choices are made, a price will be paid when you give yourself away. People never crumble in a day. The decisions, the choices we made as to whether we ally with Christ or we serve ourselves always have impact. Whether we know it or not on this side of eternity, they always have impact. The Bible says to walk circumspect. May we ever remain faithful by his grace. In Jesus' name. Amen.